Hello, and welcome to Open Source as a Business. We'll talk about the strategy uh, open source businesses take, some of the problems that they face, and some ways to get to success. Um, that's an excellent quote by the founder of uh, Puppet, an um, ops piece of software for deploying software, if you haven't used it. 98.5% uh, of the code ever put into the core of Puppet was put in there by somebody paid. Mm. So there are a lot of projects where yeah, it's just a collaboration of random peers from around the world, but much of the high, high quality open source that we use and that we can also learn from has been written on payroll from some company and increasingly those are companies that have started around the project, not uh, like a third party company that uh, doesn't have anything to do with the project directly, but that it just got spun out of. In that vein of thought, open source is not a business model. So it's arguably better in every way than closed source, except there is no immediate way, obvious way to make money with it. So you need some kind of strategy to make money, even if it's the simplest possible. Um, this is what Shai Banan, the founder of Elastic, where I work, says about open source. It is a distribution model that allows to build community. It's a force multiplier. So Shai is an engineer. He wrote the original Elasticsearch project and created Elastic, the company around it, uh, which grew from nothing to I think about 7 billion valuation on the public markets at the moment. Mm, it seems a bit weird to put it like that, but this is really like how you have to uh, think about it because once you want to start paying salaries and you know, hire your friends to work on this cool thing that you will start it and that you will enjoy, it's no longer just a hobby. Um, you can actually still mostly follow your heart, but there are consequences. Uh, like no adoption of your project is like oblivion. So. Uh, so I'm a community advocate for Elastic. Uh, today, we'll mostly talk about what other people are doing, but at the very end, I'll explain like how Elastic is this and how it makes money. Mm. It, so Elastic has um, a, a whole stack of projects and produces uh, a ton of open source, but these are, I guess, the most core, most mature open source projects that it produces. So it's Elasticsearch on the left there. It's an open source analytics and full text search engine. And Kibana um, right next to it is a graphical user interface to help you use it. And the other two are Beats and Logstash, which basically have to do with uh, web monitoring and observability solutions. Elastic actually has a lot of stuff. There's uh, enterprise search, there's observability, as I mentioned, and there's security as well. So things like enterprise grade anti-malware. Mm, quite a lot of this stuff is free to use. Uh, not everything, but a lot of it is given away for free and that's also part of its business model. So I'll um, explain later. And all of that supports the open source uh, development ultimately of um, it's like Elasticsearch, Kibana and the dozens of other projects that we have out on our GitHub. Um, and also, the, to a good extent, it supports the development of Lucene, which is like a multi-vendor open source project that allows Elasticsearch to do the search bit, essentially. <clears throat> it's pretty widely used, in case you haven't heard of us. Um, it's used by GitHub for its search. It's used by Stack Overflow and Wikipedia for their searches. Uh, at some point, the NASA JPL lab was using us for analytics on uh, the Mars rover. And yeah, a lot of online, very, very big online retailers use this just for the search part. Uh, but there's tons of different uses for the stack. Uh, now, before we get further into it, I think we should talk about a slightly different angle. Um, so this is, we've already talked about how companies make money and we'll go on talking about that. But I want you to think about 
what do you get out of participating in open source yourselves? So like many people, including me, just like the spirit of sharing knowledge and advancing together, that's why I help co-organize FOSDEM, for example, uh, like uh, open source and free software conference in Brussels. But life is a bit more complicated than just sharing and doing stuff because it's nice. Like you need practical things like food and shelters. So what do you do? Some people get to scratch an engineering itch and that's what they get out of open source. Others find like cool, well-paying remote jobs or some mix of those factors. Others get to teach and build up a local community like this conference is doing. Um, is when it can be uncomfortable to face this question um, because we prefer usually to think in more selfless terms, but it is important to think about when we face it, we can then actually focus on achieving whatever it is that brought us to the field and that um, keeps us motivated to work in it. Um, and it also kind of, if you think about it more seriously, it can help you understand the different angles which companies are coming from when they try to make uh, themselves sustainable around an open source piece of software. So let's start with strategies to make uh, a sustainable business around open source. There is support, consulting, training, and certification, because you're the authors, you know best. Um, Canonical, which is the company behind Ubuntu, if you haven't heard of it, uh, they basically, yeah, the Ubuntu is totally free to use, but Canonical gives you a phone line uh, to call support. Um, I, I'm not sure they have a commercial knowledge base, actually. They definitely offer support. Uh, Red Hat, they do an entire distribution, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, support, testing, and stability you get out of that. Uh, source code is actually available, but there are strict trademark rules. And you can also build and distribute third-party derivatives like CentOS. Sort of an older data point by now, and of course it was bought by IBM. But if you look at their history, it's pretty clear that they're always doing okay, like even during the uh, recession in 2008, they were still doing okay. Uh, so it is a model that can work, but it's also a very used example. Uh, it doesn't seem to work for everyone and the success is hard to uh, repeat. So and one problem with support is that after one or two years, the customer might know the product and might not need your support so much anymore, depending on the complexity of the problems people experience. A uh, bigger problem actually is churn. So if there are no major problems during their initial year at where they bought support, then are they gonna think that it wasn't worth it? Depending on how they measure that, they might well think that. And also it's just difficult to plan with high churn. Like how do you build a business model that plans for losing a third of your revenue every year? I mean, you can, but it's just hard. Um, another problem you face is service-only competition. So like, why not just start a consulting company directly then that competes with you rather than join you? Uh, it's more competitive, you'll get more billable hours out of it, probably cheaper than you because you, they are not covering all the research and development. Uh, if you're like 40% more expensive to cover R&D, then it's a no. And they'll go with the customers will go with a cheaper provider. So. Uh, OpenSUSE is, sorry, SUSE, uh, OpenSUSE is the distribution uh, it was based around. SUSE is um, kind of another good example and um, for a similar model. They are actually now an independent company again, but they did get passed around a lot and they, they offer support, training, and various other services. They are very stable and they've grown a lot and they you can write on things like uh, Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, and Kubernetes very well. Um, another strategy you could use is uh, Open Core, like Elastic. Uh, a classic example of this is um, MySQL. So this, um, with MySQL, you have 
dual license. So you have the GPL version 2 version and the commercial version, which allows you to embed MySQL in commercial products, distribute commercial modifications, and they also now do commercial features. So with Open Core, you can mean lots of different things, but most often what I've seen people mean is like there's commercial plugins or something like that around a genuinely open source, well supported core project, hence Open Core. Uh, but it means a lot of things depending on the company. Um, then problems with Open Core is you have competing tools. So usually with Open Core, people start selling plugins to like monitor uh, their piece of software and like finer or add security in a finer grain. Mm, but that's a very wide field and other people can come in and build the same monitoring and security tools and then they're competing with you. Whether those are free or other businesses, still competing. There is a chance over time that uh, you lose the balance and it becomes less open and more commercial just because those are the incentives. You just need to make more and more money. And then you have um, also a problem with cloud providers. Um, which like if you're building something that AWS can run, then they are covering security and monitoring and instead of you, uh, which means it's not your problem. But also if that's how you're trying to make money, then you could have a problem. And then another possibility is donations. One really interesting project here is Open Collective, which is like, it's basically a framework that allows you to collect donations you know, on behalf of your well, it allows your project to collect donations. Um, so their stated sort of goal is to provide the tools to raise money and share your finances in full transparency. Uh, so that's quite cool. If you're wanting to collect donations, uh, if look into it. They seem to provide um, like good tools for this. And there's a bit of a community of projects around it that use it that can help you out even more with helpful tips of how to get people to donate. Another donations example is Wikimedia Foundation. The only thing with that is nobody really got it working on as large a scale for software. And it's also very hard to plan for like donation income. Um, this is a quote about, by one of my favorite small business leaders. So for, she says, for Patreon or donations to be viable, you actually have to put in just as much work as you would have to selling services or a product, thereby ending up with less from donations. Um, so we, like everybody knows that donations are hard work, but what I don't see so often is contrasting them with the option to build a commercial offering around it. Because uh, some people just like think donations and that's, that's how far they think. Uh, but that's just true. Like actually, if you really compare afterwards, because like when you have a commercial offering, people are just used to, okay, I have to pay for something. I want this thing, I'm going to pay for it. Whereas with donations, they might give you money, they might not. So it's hard to tell. So let's talk a little bit about success. First off, success doesn't have to look like a business. What's the company behind Postgres, for example? Um, like the one company that supports it, like Elastic supports Elasticsearch. And there isn't one, and it's an awesome, awesome project despite that. I guess you have to just have enough maintainers that you it, you make it sustainable, uh, you don't burn out. Then this is an interesting post by an engineer at Lyft who started this piece of software called Envoy, which is basically a cloud native proxy. He sat down and like really thought through starting a business around this project that became pretty popular pretty quickly. And um, then he was like, actually, no, I don't want to. So that's a totally valid choice. So are your only two alternatives hobby and VC? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, I used to run a small consultancy with some British friends. And that's just in the area of open science and uh, open access to knowledge, to scientific knowledge. Uh, there is demand for this work, so there is work to be found. This is an extract of kind of our biggest clients over time, specifically only the ones that requested open source work. Um, the thing here is that if uh, you, well, you're gonna, you might burn out <laughs> with consulting. 
you, if you can divorce time from value, then you should. So things like value-based pricing are worth looking up and productized consulting, where you basically sell packages. Another option is soft, besides consulting, software as a service, if your project lends itself to being run that way. Bootstrapping is basically where you're always cash flow positive. So you start with something and uh, you start with just some servers basically and your effort, uh, maybe a bit of money for advertising. But it's something that like an individual or two people could take on in terms of budget. And then you grow that. So you, know, you get customers, you talk to people on the phone, like whatever it takes, you get your first customers and then you grow from there. And it's like a very slow, sometimes, often, very slow slog and climb up. Uh, but you're always making more money than you're spending. So you haven't taken investor money or anything like that. I highly, highly recommend if you're interested in that kind of route to check out that podcast, Startups or the Rest of Us. It's been going for a very long time. And the community around MicroConf, like go look at the old videos from the conference, uh, some really eye-opening stuff around running a small business. Mm, okay, so... I talked to you about some options uh, how to potentially reach success. So what's Elastic strategy with all this? So Elastic has the core, which is open source uh, of the projects. Then we have this code, which is free, um, but it's not open source. It's source available. You can actually download the code. You can look at it. Uh, you can contribute fixes. You can even redistribute it. You can't resell it as um, a paid service. So you can't take Elasticsearch, uh, sorry, you could take Elasticsearch and resell it, the, the open source version, um, but you can't take Elasticsearch with the basic plugins, uh, which is like a lot of interesting advanced features, and then resell that. And like Kibana, the graphical interface has even more of those features. So if you're a user, uh, like the vast, 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 vast majority of people, you could just get it, uh, use it totally for free, but can't resell. Uh, so then uh, on top of that, we have uh, basically commercial license tiers where you pay a per node subscription and you also get support with that. This is the history of it. So we had Elasticsearch, which was, okay, just the open source repository. And then we had XPAC, which was all closed plugins. You had to pay. And then we published XPAC the code and now it's out there source available um, so the vast majority of XPAC free and then there's some commercial features that you actually have to pay for but now you can read all of it learn from all of it and sometimes it's just really useful if there's a really annoying bug uh, with your vendor to be able to go and look into the code uh, so yeah I think it was a good move for the company to to do that. I think more people can see the code and, and read it. And I think that's a net positive in the end and keeping it closed, even though, like, you know, because it has to protect itself to make some money, even though not all of it is under the Apache 2 box. It's still much better, I think, as an approach. So besides the paid um, plugins, we also offer training, consulting, and as I said, support. But in addition to the paid plugins, we did something quite clever. Uh, like with machine learning, rather than paying a okay, so somewhat pricier subscription per node, you can actually get it piecemeal you know, by the hour on um, Elastic Cloud. And that's basically our own cloud service. And of course, it, even if you don't want that, you just want to run like open source Elasticsearch, but uh, you don't want the hassle of maintaining and monitoring it, then you can also use cloud. And the, the last one I mentioned, just because this is a, another way we make money, uh, we basically took cloud, our cloud, uh, the control plane for how Elastic Cloud runs, and uh, we sell it to enterprises to basically run their own internal clouds, cloud on-premise kind of thing. So yeah, so that's how uh, we make money. Uh, consulting training, paid commercial features, and cloud. 
have any questions, please let me know. And also if you have any disagreements, um, I'm always curious to chat. Hey, Emmanuel, are you there? Shall we start with some questions before our last uh, talk, which is uh, from Besford Guri. Um, he was going to present the sensor stations project uh, and he's starting in 10 minutes. So are you around? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I, I, I have quite a, a few questions about it. I think there is a lot of talk, at, at least from the last years, about uh, open source, business models is open source. And usually, there because of the mix of community that has some ownership in or fields that has some ownership, and there is also this uh, fight against marketing or anything related to marketing uh, that is is considered a sellout. I was and since this this is coordinated by Flosk, uh, and which is the part of the conference is uh, coordinated by Flosk, which is a, an organization focused on the community of free and open source software, I would like to ask you, what is the role or what you have you seen the role of the community in your project? Uh, and for the good or the bad size or things that you think can be improved as well? So um, for the main, by now there are several open source projects that Elastic maintains and contributes upstream to several ones, like I've actually seen uh, that that's like a multi-vendor thing. So the Communities of these individual projects have played a have played a huge role in developing the company. But I kind of tend to see it more as it's good that the company developed because now it can serve those communities as well, uh, so long as it doesn't take over, uh, like in the case of Apache Lucene, for example. So long as there are still other vendors and there's the, the project still serves other interests then actually having a strong company that can pay like you know, 20 core developers or Lucene um, is very good for Lucene and in general for the advancement of search technology. So like that way it works well. But Elastic, you know, by, by now is a more, uh, definitely a big company and it's a powerful company. In the beginning, the community played a huge role in helping the company grow. So yeah, this is like the CEO uh, this, that I quoted at the very beginning, Shai, he was like on, on um, uh, mailing lists answering questions and all of that. And uh, that's, that's exactly why I quote him in the beginning. He says it's a, basically a way to spread the word about the software. So without that kind of bottom-up adoption, which you needed open source so that people would trust it, and they needed it to be free so that people would use it. Without those things, um, I don't think it would. The company would be where it is now, and I think they do good job of remembering that. But uh, I've seen other companies slip up and focus more on extracting money, um, and there's no guarantee that Elastic won't in the future, to be honest. But for now, um, at least while our founder is at the helm, seems like it's okay. So yeah, it's a very weird dynamic where in, in many communities I've seen where, and where I've contributed personally, the community feels like a shareholder. So it's a very weird dynamic between the business interest of a company where they need to be the, pay the rent and the developers, but also they need to... So I think uh, considering the community a shareholder might be a, a, a formula. Uh, and uh, one... Another question would be, what happens if, what's your opinion of, about forks? So not only specifically on your case, but you, we've seen on cloud and next cloud, but also, uh, you know, you know, the open office and the liberal office project, et cetera, et cetera. So what, what, what do you think of that? I guess it depends on what the fork is, is for. Uh, obviously it's open source, so anybody is free to fork it. Um, I don't think that a private company getting upset over a fork is really right. Um, there have actually been forks of Elasticsearch as well. And, um, you know, like obviously the company Elastic believes in its way of doing things. So it's continued with its way. Uh, but um, I, well, I don't think 
I don't think I've seen my colleagues criticize a fork just for because it's a fork. They might don't not like something else about it. But and in the case of um, other projects, um, I guess this each case is quite different. But if it comes to a fork, then there is strong sentiment for it. Um, and if it's a community fork, and like okay, a large portion of the community is now upset because of a licensing change or, or a commercial change. And okay, right. So that's exactly why open source and uh, free software licenses give us that power, right? To take a copy of the code and go in a way that we like. I, mm, I guess the where the tension comes in is where the original or, or people who stay in the original project don't feel that the fork, like they can't feel that there's some agitation for the fork like a small group of people is just agitating and maybe saying untrue things to split the community and to then get people to their fork um yeah that, that's happened in the case of elastic as well um that's it's like very hard to take a particular side i i think that people are if people have a different vision then they're right to make a fork i, I don't think that if some, even if it's a minority of a community, if it's unhappy with the governance and it has the capability to make a fork, I don't see why you should stay there and be unhappy if you know that you can't make change. It's the same in other places, you know, like if you really are unhappy in a job, as soon as you can, you should leave and other parts of life. So I support the ability to do so. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, before thanking you for the for, again for your presentation, I would like to, to say that it seems that the the open source has has gone a long way, and there are all these business models are now that were not before so established, which is I think it's good because more people are getting employed, and more um, uh, and and more companies are being created and uh, new dynamics. Of course. Uh, any progress comes a lot of, like with with things that are pros and cons. So uh, very exciting to see what's if you do the next presentation once the, once the pandemic is over and probably well, hopefully we're going to see you in the city here soon. Uh, hopefully we can see new business model coming coming up and there they combine all the elements together, including the communities that are involved with that. Thank you very much, and um, I'd like to to present the next presentation starting in less than three minutes from Besford Guri. He's done a very interesting projects. He's, he's going to talk about a very interesting hardware related project about sensor stations. Uh, so stay tuned. Thank you.